Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I'm going to be discussing this latest tool that I've just enabled in the uh, wall <coughs> beams uh, and columns. Uh, basically we've got two new icons here, the draw post and the edit post. And the difference between a post and a column, uh, just so you guys are we're clear on this, um, basically a post is a freestanding column and a column, at least in terms of how we're calling things in the plugin, is basically an in-wall column. So this is a, a new item and first thing I'm going to do is put this here back and then I'm going to show you also in the global settings that we have also added a couple um, <coughs> items having to do with posts. So basically if you have the post callouts that you want turned on, you can turn those on here and you also have the prefix so you can label your posts, so post 1, post 2, post 3, or in this case I'm going to use P1, P2, P3. And then of course similar to walls and beams um, you have an index. So you start at 1 and then you can always re come in here and reset this if you need to. Uh, so you can restart back at 1 or, or whatever number you need to start at. So we'll just go ahead and leave those as they are for now, um, but just to make you aware of that. So really simple, um, just click this icon, the menu will come up, it's HTML menu. And <clears throat> this is the basic options, of course. And right now we've set it on a timber 6x6 six six post, we'll just leave it at default. And you can see here that, um, you know, you've got your label, you've got uh, your callout. And I've also got framing callouts turned on, so, th so that's why you have this other additional information. If you want, um, <clears throat> you can turn your framing callouts off and that's this this parameter right here and then you won't get quite as much detail so you know there you may or may not need that if you regen this now um, and by the way when you right click on the assembly for a post you have the edit post and the regen post option so notice that the regen post now does not show the additional framing information it just shows the uh, the label and then a description of what type of post it is Okay, so that's very basic. You know, we've got a six by six post. Um, another kind of cool thing you can do is, you know, if you've got like a, a spot footing, <coughs> let's just go with a simple spread footing right here. Um, well, actually, <coughs> what you can do is, is you can line it right up, right, right here on this. Okay, so now you've got a footing and a post, and you know, this footing you might need to um, let's turn on a. <coughs> remember where it is here, column hardware, here we go. So we've got a 6x6, six six. we'll use a CBSQ 6x6, six six. hit update on that, and now you can see that uh, we've added the uh, <coughs> post base hardware. Um, so you know, these two plugins now kind of work hand in hand, so you've got the footing, the spread footing sitting under the post, so that's kind of nice. Um, <coughs> so let's go ahead and play with some options with this post. So You've got basically two ways of editing it. You can right click on it and click the edit post assembly or you can just go ahead and click this uh, edit post icon. Either way it's going to do the same thing. And when you do that it just brings up the edit menu which is very similar to the draw menu. Um, we've got quite a few similar to beams really. We've got um, all kinds of different types of posts. Um, you know you can do like you know, just regular um, sawn lumber. Of course that's a 2 by 4 uh, but you know, in this case, maybe you want a three ply two by six, and there you have it. And then you know, like <coughs> with uh, lumber, you also have the option to make it pressure treated. And you'll notice the color changes, and it goes to a different uh, pressure treated color. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this back to a timber six by six post. Uh, it's three ply. Okay, so we obviously don't want that. Let's just put it back to one ply. Okay, so now I'm going to start messing with some of these advanced options. So first things first, turn on the advanced options. You'll notice you have a bunch of things. Um, of course, if you do that, nothing actually happens. It just you know gives you the option to turn on different things. So let's start with the wrap. Um, you know, basically you've got a wrap. Now <clears throat> the nice thing is, is you can pull any of these. Uh, materials that are in your uh, your custom library and you can use them so um, you know there's all kinds of colors I've enabled here let's go ahead and just try that because it's kind of not really a nice color but 
Um, so, so there's a wrap. Um, and then the kind of the cool thing I added, and this is something I may change later on, um, but you have this ability to throw an air gap in there. Like, for instance, in cases where you have like brick, right? So you've got like, let's assume this is a brick cladding or wrap around this post. We'll change that. Um, we'll change it to red brick. Uh, and by the way, red brick is the only white and red brick are really the only two built in uh, custom uh, well, not custom, but uh, materials. And the rest of these are coming from your material library. So let's hit update. And so now you can see that you, you've got your 6 by 6 posts with a 1 inch air gap and with a 3.5 inch thick brick wrapping all the way around it. Okay. So, um, yeah, and you know, if, if you have caps and bases. So the cap basically, I'm just going to leave it at default. It basically wraps, uh, you know, a cap and it always starts at the top um, so you know if you make this deeper for instance let's say it's a 2 by 8 thickness um, it's going to be at the top um, similarly uh, with the base same sort of idea and again you can change these materials each each item has its own custom material you can assign it so you've got the cap material the base material the wrap material all that good stuff <coughs> um, so astragal is basically the one that's in the center so you know there's sometimes you have that sort of situation and the uh, difference between the uh, astragal and the cap and the base is this has one extra parameter which drives the height so for instance you know maybe you have this uh, 48 inches instead of 36 so that basically just sets the height of where that astragal is positioned on rel <coughs> re relative to the base of the column okay so pretty basic um, let's go ahead and change this back to 0.75 and let's just bring that back to white and we're gonna go with an air gap so what happens is when you do that everything gets readjusted back uh, you know to where it would be <coughs> and and by the way the thing about these default colors um, you know that get created so you'll notice that here's the wrap you can always um, edit these here within SketchUp, within the native SketchUp Material Manager. Um, you know, there's nothing, there's no harm in doing that. And once you do make those edits, let's for instance, let's kind of go with that nice beige sort of color. Um, <coughs> you know, if you if you regen this model, that that it's not basically once that material has been created it's not going to the plugin does not try to recreate those materials so if you manually edit any of the materials here they will stick basically the plugin will just say hey does that material exist and if it does it uses it if it doesn't exist then it's going to recreate it so if you want to reset that for instance you can delete that material here and then the plugin will try to find it and if it doesn't find it it will actually recreate it from scratch so <clears throat> so the nice thing is is yeah you can go in and edit these uh, materials at any time if, if you know if you if you want to do that all right so you know there's a pretty standard sort of column situation or freestanding post or column whatever you want to call it you used you know residential construction and in commercial stuff so let's go ahead and add one more option and that would be the um, wainscot so let's go edit post assembly so we've turned everything on except for the wainscot. So wainscot has a few more options. Um, <coughs> so typically what happens with this is, you know, usually you're going to see a situation where you've got like a uh, cultured stone or brick cladding down here with the wainscot. Um, but let's just show you with default what happens. Okay, so, so basically it, it's almost like it has two separate wraps. You know, here's your top wrap, here's your bottom wrap. And by the way, when you enable the wainscot, then the wrap on top terminates uh, where the wainscot starts so you know this isn't very typical um, and by the way the the position of the astrical is not controlled at all by the wainscot height so you know you can adjust this astrical wherever you like um, and it can even you know overlap on top of the wainscot or wherever it doesn't it doesn't really matter in fact I'll just demonstrate that real quick uh, let's try 35 inches see it's right there let's try uh, 40 inches Okay, see, so now we've got it kind of overlapping. <coughs> All right, so let's um, let's get this kind of more of a typical uh, uh, wainscot situation. We're gonna do. Let's try red brick. Actually, no, we're, we're gonna try like a stone, cultured stone sort of situation. Um, let's just say it's like two inches 
you know, and you can, the nice thing with this edit menu is you, know, you can just kind of play with it and get it to where you like it. You know, maybe you want it to be popping out further. Maybe that stone's thicker. I don't know. It's really up to you as a user uh, how you want that to all come out. Let's bump that astral up just a little bit so we can see kind of what's going on there. Um, here, I'm just going to bring it up 55 just to get, get it out of the way. So you can see what's happening there. Um, so, so you know, this sort of thing's quite typical, but usually in this sort of case, you have what I call a ledge uh, or a cap on top of that wainscot, and that's kind of what the wainscot ledge gives you. So the wainscot ledge, if you turn that on, um, so now you've got this sort of thing going, okay, and you can control basically the height of the wainscot is the top of the ledge. So the ledge will drive, uh, basically drive your uh, wainscot down. And I'll demonstrate that here. So let's say it's a three inch thickness. So it's, it's pushing the top of the wainscot down. Um, so the, basically the dimension of interest, I guess, is um, right there. So there's our 36 inches, right? <clears throat> so if you turn the wainscot off, now your, or your ledge off, sorry, then your wainscot is back up to the 36 inches. But let's go ahead and turn that back on. Um, and one of the built-in parameters or materials for the ledge material I've added is this concrete, which is built in. You don't have to have that in your custom material library. And that will automatically throw that out as concrete. So I just thought that'd be nice to have. Um, uh, basically, the way the ledge goes is, you know, you've got this overlap, right? And basically, that's controlled by that parameter. So you can control how much that overlaps. So really, the dimensions of this is driven by the wainscot dimensions. <clears throat> um, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. But anyways, if you have any questions, let me let me know. OK, so right now, you know, we've got this 3 inches. Let's say we want this astral down here sitting on top of that. Well, then you just got to get your numbers right. And um, so I've got 36 plus 5 and a half. Uh, what's that? Put me at 41 and a half, I think. Yeah. So there we go. Again, like I said, you can drop the astrical right down, you know, in there. You can. It's not dependent upon any of these other heights. It just kind of, you can shift it relative anywhere on the on the column itself. So you know, there's kind of your typical. Um, uh, column or freestanding column or post with a wainscot and cladding or wrap and a base a, or a base and a cap and an astral. So there's kind of all of your options. Um, and of course, we have the uh, concrete as well from the foundation plugin. So I think pretty much in a nutshell that wraps it up. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, one other thing I was going to mention, just also uh, the way I'm putting this on the layers, I guess, is I should probably mention that. Um, so the wrap and let's see, I'm trying to remember which layers we've got this assigned to. I don't have special layers assigned. You know, I'm just using the ones that are kind of already um, being enabled. So if you turn off the wall cladding, you'll turn off the wainscot and the um, and the wrap and then and the ledge. And then if you turn off the um, the trim, um, then you'll turn off the base, astrical, and cap, right? So uh, at some point I may add a separate, you know, bunch of layers or ability to assign those to different layers if that becomes a necessity. But I'm just kind of waiting for additional feedback on that. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. It's fairly basic uh, little module I just added, but I think it'll be helpful for a lot of us that are trying to do these sorts of things and you know don't want to spend a lot of time uh, creating all that geometry again it's just creating the manually creating all this geometry I mean there's a lot going on here when you actually get down to it so the more we can automate this sort of thing then the better off we are alright well thank you very much and we will talk to you again later